Hello guys, in today's tutorial we're going to make a Mario Fireball, just like the ones in Mario. So first, let me show you how they should work. So here we've got our Mario, and as you'll see, when he shoots the ball, it, she goes on a straight line, and then in, instead of a parabola, because in real life it will go on a parabola, but it goes on a straight line, and then it does a parabola here whenever it goes hits the ground as you can see also one other property of the mario fireball is it gains height if you hit it onto higher surfaces as you can see right here let let me explain that a little bit more here as you can see in reality if a ball that doesn't lose energy whenever it hits the ground is bouncing around it will always keep the same maximum height even if it hits a block as you can see here, the, the height is always the same, but in Mario, if a ball hits uh, some block, or whatever it is, then the maximum height, instead of being the same, will get bigger, because that's just how it is. <laughs> and then, whenever it hits the ground again, the original ground, it will get to the same height as it was, as it was before. So, this thing right here, and the, that straight line, these are the two things, the two mainly things that we're going to program today. So, in the last tutorial, uh, links in the description by the way, we made the player be able to shoot something, and we made the default projectile for him to shoot, which, which was this fireball as you can see here. And right now, this fireball is kinematic, and we'll, we'll be using this fireball prefab to, to program the Mario fireball. So first make it not kinematic. And all, all the rest you can keep it the same. As you can see, just as a collider, and the, and the sprite and the rigidity to D, like that. And on the player, we added this script which would throw a fireball or any other projectile with a certain velocity. In this case, we're going to make it 10 and minus 10 because the ball in Mario will be shot forward and downward, just like that. Anyways, we're going to use this prefab over here. Let's add a component to it, fireball. Like that. And by the way, before we start any programming, the first thing that is happening is that whenever we throw the ball, the ball is, goes straight to the ground and doesn't bounce. So what we're going to do first is whenever the ball hits the ground, it bounces. Now we could use a physics 2D material to do that, but then this wouldn't be possible with that material. So we have to script it, and it's actually pretty simple to script. So whenever it hits something, focus on collision enter 2D with a collision 2D call. Whenever this happens, we want to change the velocity of the fireball. So let's first make here uh, two variables. For that, we do that public rigid body 2D RB and public vector2 velocity and in the start we're going to make that rb which is a, the rigid body to the of the fireball be equal to the component we're just going to do that so that we don't have this to type this get component thing down there which would be a little bit not optimized so we do this and the velocity we want to make the velocity be equal to the rb dot velocity and the rb dot velocity that was on the start is the velocity set by the player so the velocity we set here okay so with that done on the collision enter what we want to do is to make the rigid body dot velocity to be equal to a new vector 2 and we want to make the velocity dot x remain the same and we want to invert the velocity dot y meaning if it was going down now we want to make it minus, so it goes up, just like that. Save. And this will also implement this mechanic over here, because this velocity right here, so this is the default velocity at which the projectile should go, should hit. So, meaning whenever the projectile hits something, it will go up with a velocity of 10 by 10, no matter what, at what height it is. Done. So, let me show you that. As you can see, the fireball jumps. And by the way, let me make here a little block so that you can see that it also goes up ledges. 
Whoops. It's a little buggy right now, but we'll solve that in a bit. But as you can see, it jumps. If it gets on there, instead of going to this height over here, it goes to this height over here, which is a bit higher, just like we wanted. Now we also want to set the that uh, to make it go on a straight line, because right now it's going on a arch. It doesn't seem like it, but it is. If I slow down the velocity, you'll see it better. Five by minus five. As you can see, it's going on an arch, and I want it to go on a straight line. And to make that, all you have to do is on the update function, if the rigid by 2D dot velocity dot y is smaller than the velocity that we set on the velocity dot y, so if the the bullet is going down at a smaller velocity than minus 5 in this case, then you want to set it to be equal to minus 5. So the rb dot velocity equals velocity, meaning it's set to the terminal velocity. And if I hit play, now you'll see that it'll go on a straight line, like, like so. And that's the basic ball mechanics. Now we're going to make the ball disappear whenever it collides with balls, which will also fix these weird bugs where you can see the ball sometimes jumps, sometimes doesn't. And by the way, I'm going to make the, this go back to 10 and minus 10. There you go. Now, whenever something hits a wall or whatever, whenever something hits something else, this happens. And a collision 2D, which is the parameter that we receive whenever we enter collision, which is a collision 2D, has several components. Now, the one that we are interested about now is the contacts. The contacts are the points wherever it hits. So say, so say the ball hits here, this point in world space will be that contact point. And of course there are multiple contact points in a collision. We will just be using the first one, which is the zero point. And for each contact point, there's a normal. And what is a normal? The normal perpendicular line to where the collision happened. So say that we have here our ball. Let me grab it real quick. Yeah, we are our ball. And imagine that the ball collided in this way. Because this surface to where the ball collided is like this, it's horizontal, then the normal will be up. Will be just like this green line over here. It will be up. If the ball collides like so, then because this here, this plane here is a vertical plane, then the the normal will be this way. It will be a vector that goes from here to here. So it will be basically the opposite of this red arrow over here. And if the ball hits this way, then the again because this plane here is a vertical one, then the the normal will be a normal that goes from here to here, just like this arrow over here. With that in mind, let's set whenever the ball should disappear. So whenever we enter a collision, if the normal, so if the call dot contact dot and we are going to choose the contact zero because there is only one contact point in this collision dot normal dot x is different from zero then we should delete the ball meaning if the ball is hits here then the normal will be a, a line that goes up which is uh, zero one so zero on the x one on the y so in this case the ball will go on but in, in any other case, the ball should disappear. Now, of course, if you want to make the ball also not disappear on inclined planes, then instead of doing, then instead of doing this, you should do something that has a little bit more of a, a tolerance. So make it something like if the normal dot x is greater than point point something something like this, and you also have to make this an absolute value. But because I don't need to do that, I will make just I'll just do this. So if that happens, then we want to destroy the ball. And I'm going to make a, a function that destroys the ball because there's several stuff that I want to do there. Which will be for instance instantiate an explosion and also destroy this game object. So we want to explode. And while we are at it, 
there's also a few other occasions where we want to destroy the ball. First is if the ball travels too much time. So on the function, on the start function, let's make a, the ball be destroyed if it lives for 10 seconds. So if, if the ball after 10 seconds is still alive, we will delete it so that it doesn't consume processing time or whatever it's called. And also, we also want to make the ball kill enemy. And when it kills the enemy, the enemy should also destroy the ball. So, on collision enter, if call.collider.tag equals deadly. And this is the tag that we give to our enemies. So, let me just grab an enemy here. There you go. And let me make this again zero. And I'm going to put another one over here so that the enemy doesn't run away. So as you can see, it has a deadly, the deadly tag. So if it's deadly, then we want to destroy the call dot game object, which is the enemy, and then we want to explode the ball, like so. Save, and you'll see that if I throw a ball into the, the enemy it disappears and if I throw a ball into a corner it also disappears now there's some problem where sometimes the ball also disappears on the ground as you can see right here and that's because the collision is discrete so let me explain that to you so here on the collision detection there's two types of collision the discrete and the continuous and the discrete one happens every fixed update, meaning every time that the physics of the game updates, then we also check this collision. But because this is an important collision and we wanted to check it every, every frame, because the ball is going very fast and in a few seconds it could be in very different places, we're going to make this continuous. And this way, no matter where you are, the ball will always bounce as you wish. And by the way, You'll see that after a few seconds the ball will disappear. So they are disappearing here. Also, as we expected. So the ball is basically done. Now, all I'm going to add to it is some fanciness and some effects to make it look cooler. So, let's add first a, a particle system to it to give it like a trail. So I'm going to add a particle system and make it the, the lifetime be a little bit smaller maybe 0.2 and the start size also 0.1 or 0.2 and you can use these particles you can use whatever particles you want this is whatever you, you can do whatever you want basically I'm just showing you a way of doing it now the way to instantiate balls instantiate uh, particles I'll be sticking with the cone so I'm just going to make the cone really small like that now the emission can stay like this. Uh, another thing that I want to change is the the simulation space. I will make it uh, world space because right now as you can see the particles follow the fireball. But if I set it to world, then the particles don't follow the fireball. They stay where they are. Uh, finally, I'll be adding more particles. So let's try a hundred and change the color over a lifetime. To be first, a color similar to this uh, orange. This is not orange. This is orange. There you go. And then in the end, they get transparent. Like so. Okay. Let's apply so that it gets applied to the prefab. And let's see how it goes. And as you can see, it generates this cool effect. Now I'm going to also add a sound to it. So I have this sound that you can do whatever you do want. Um, and to the to that, you can add another component, audio source. Make sure it's set to play on awake, and just drag that component in there. And now. Whenever you shoot something, it will say that noise. Finally, let's give it an explosion. So, 
to make an explosion I'm just going to grab the basic fireball sprite this is not a, the prefab this is a sprite and I'm going to animate it so go into the animation create and the explosion anim so usually in the, what the explosion is is it starts to real small like 0 0.1 0 0.1 and uh, after very little time it gets real big like 4 by 4 and if you play as you can see that is what will happen it's a little bit slow so make it closer bam there you go and save and we have to make sure that this will not loop so that we don't the ball doesn't keep on exploding so I'm going to the explosion animation we just created and uncheck loop time there you go and finally I'm going to make this explosion get destroyed after it explodes so on, uh, I'm going to add a script which is a destroy by time script which if I show to you it's just a, a basic script where on the start function we call this this after very little time it gets destroyed so we can make it very little time and add it to here and make it name it explosion so that we don't get confused and now on the fireball script I will set here a public chem object explosion and on the explode before I destroy this game object, I want to instantiate the explosion with a transform that position and with the quaternion dot identity. Done. Save. And on Unity, so grab the explosion and put it in there. And now uh, we can delete this one. Make sure that this one is applied to the to the everything else and delete it. After that, play. And now, as you can see, explosion is instantiated whenever the particle the particle is destroyed. And that's it. Thank you very much for, for watching guys. Like if you found this helpful, dislike if you didn't. And thank you for watching.